Hi, I'm Mike Stanton from Build America Mutual. I'm here with Brian Babler and Dan Bingham from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. And this is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. Uh, lots to talk about this week. A lot of action in the interest rate markets, particularly munis, underperforming treasuries, uh, sending yields higher. Dan, why don't you take us through what happened? Sure, Mike. And uh, a couple of times when we've uh, talked about it, it, it's felt like uh, the same sort of routine with the gr slowly grinding uh, treasury market and munis outperforming. And that's certainly what we've seen uh, through the course of this year up until about two weeks ago. Um, and this week, I would just you know say, wow, what kind of movements that we haven't seen. 10-year treasury uh, uh, broke from a 140 to a 160 um, on uh, uh, Wednesday into Thursday. And uh, across the treasury curve, volatility that we hadn't seen in a long time. We've seen a reversal of that, but it certainly got a lot of people focus on the prospect of higher yields and not necessarily just a 150 on the 10 year, but everyone's starting to talk about 2% uh, type numbers on the 10 year. Um, with that in the tax exempt side, um, we've seen uh, performance go negative. Um, and when performance goes negative, you tend uh, to see cash flows into mutual funds uh, dry up and or uh, reverse. And you start to see people getting nervous about higher yields, uh, worsening performance, um, and they want to protect their assets by taking money out of the funds. Um, and we started to see the beginning of that this week's um, three, uh, 38 billion of inflows, but I would, I would say that some of that was last week inflows uh, reversed into this week. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see how the flows um, perform over the next week and whether the volatility we saw this week results in some meaningful outflows. Um, just a and quick, can... uh, just to cut you off for a second there, Dan, it, it 38 million of uh, inflows and uh, viewers can see, we have the slide up on the screen. Uh, they, that bar is so short, it's actually invisible. You can't make it out, but I promise you there is a positive $37 million uh, green bar on the slide. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it pales in comparison to what we've seen on average this, this uh so far this year. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how those uh, flows, if they do in fact go negative. Um, you know, the muni, muni market, I've sort of uh, uh, felt that we've had decent enough cash inflows and a light enough calendar. Um, but if those cash flows go negative, we could start to see uh, some pressures. Um, we did see a very big reversal in ratios where munis had been touching record lows and on the ratio to the point where it didn't make sense for people to actually be buying municipals. They could go sell their municipals and buy treasuries, pay the tax on it and, and come out better off. Um, those ratios did adjust with the moves uh, this week and the 10 year ratio currently at 79 basis points and the 30 year ratio currently at 82%, sorry, 79% and 82% on the 10 year and 30 year. So adjustments still still somewhat on the rich side versus historical averages, um, but a big adjustment from the lows we've seen over the past few weeks. And so you make a great uh, important point about the, the calendar. Uh, this week was scheduled to be the uh, heaviest volume of the year so far. I think it probably still was, uh, but that was dominated by one giant deal from the University of California. So Brian, why don't you uh, take us through what happened there? Yeah, amidst all the volatility, uh, the, the supply numbers really kind of ended up coming in pretty close to uh, estimates, uh, just over uh, 10 billion or so. And as you mentioned, that was very concentrated. Um, uh, Regents of the University of California sold uh, over 3 billion bonds. Uh, all of that ended up getting done with the exception of, I believe, uh, a tax exempt series of about 400 million that ended up going day to day status. Um, but as Dan mentioned, um, you know, with the reversal today of treasuries um, kind of gaining back some of the ground that they lost, and then also the muni market being um, held flat um, based on the uh, late afternoon reads to MMD, you know, maybe, uh, maybe some of that comes back. But overall, you know, about 10, a little over 10 billion came to market, which was in line with estimates and, and heavier than we've, uh, than we've really seen this, this week. So um, you know, again, with with the absence of uh, a lot of fresh cash flow to the tune of one or two billion that we've been seeing per week, you know, at that uh, uh, paltry 30, 38 million, um, you know, the, generally speaking, adjustments needed to be made. Um, some of the spreads were wider as MMD was gapping out, you know, five, six, seven basis points a day from morning to afternoon. 
Um, but overall, um, you know, uh, most of the deals um, did end up getting done. Some of it went day to day, like I said. Um, but uh, but overall, it was um, you know it was fairly uh, fairly um, well received. Um, Bam had a pretty active week. Uh, we insured almost 300 million in par. Uh, some of the bigger deals that highlighted that activity were uh, 38 million for the University of South Alabama. Um, and 34 million for Marysville, uh, Marysville uh, USD in California. Um, so pretty active week um, uh, for insurance as well. You know, again, we continue to see in this volatile type of environment, uh, insurance uh, insurance definitely helps execution, helps broaden buyer base, and uh, and helps get deals done. And then Marysville uh, transaction was the uh, latest in a series of school district transactions we've seen uh, that are qualified for the BAM Green Star uh, verification program. Uh, I believe it was for energy efficiency and a lot of renewable energy upgrades to the buildings in the district. So uh, we've seen several of those so far this year. It's a trend that keeps growing. Uh, what do you see ahead for this coming week? Uh, next week, uh, supply will be down a little bit, uh, about $8 billion or so is scheduled to price right now. Again, if uh, we see some of those deals that went day to day this week, with some stability in the market come back, that number could grow, um, but it'll be a little bit a uh, little bit quieter. Um, uh, BAM's got about uh, 170 plus million scheduled to price. Uh, there's a handful of larger deals uh, that uh, insurance will be made, uh, insurance decisions will be made on the day of pricing, but some of the larger deals that we've got teed up are 44 million for Waukegan, Illinois. That's gonna be priced by Bernardi Securities. And then uh, there's a $35 million deal for Pinal County Community College in Arizona uh, that's uh, scheduled to be priced by Piper. That's one of the ones uh, with insurance scheduled to be uh, decided upon on sale date. And, uh, and those numbers don't include a, uh, a $285 million uh, POB deal for the city of Orange in California. Um, BAM's uh, qualified that and, and been selected as the insurer if insurance is used. Uh, we could see uh, either a partial uh, or the entire deal insured. We insured about 75 million out of 350 million of a recent Chula Vista POB deal a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's a, that could be a, a similar situation where partial insurance is used. And of course, those uh, POB deals are in the taxable market. Uh, so, so presence of non-traditional muni investors there, pe uh, people who are not as familiar with muni uh, credit analysis often uh, favors insurance in those transactions. Um, so, you know, just one last point. Uh, we heard earlier today on CNBC, uh, the Muni Money segment, which BAM sponsors on CNBC, uh, Michael Schumacher from Wells Fargo and uh, Jason Ware from 280 Securities Talking. They were predicting that there might be a, a, a plateauing of the underperformance that Muni's may, uh, may pause and, and come back into line with Treasuries uh, over the next week. Certainly a, a lighter calendar would help with that. Any uh, predictions from you guys? Yeah, uh, you know, I'll, Dan, feel free to jump in as well. Um, but uh, but generally, we'll we'll see that we'll see some major adjustments, and then uh, and then the muni market will kind of get back to uh, get back to its usual swing of things. Um, so we tend to lag on the way uh, down and up as well. Um, but you know, really, as as Dan mentioned earlier, we haven't seen the ratios. Uh, where we are right now uh, in really a couple of weeks or months. Um, so although it's historically, you know, still on the richer end of the spectrum right now, it feels uh, at north of 80 percent, it feels uh, relatively cheap. So, you know, with some stabilization, um, again, Dan mentioned the, the fund flows will be a key indicator. Um, we're also rolling into a, a seasonally weak period. Uh, where, um, you know, uh, April 15th tax deadline, typically, you know, munis are one source of redemption to pay tax bills, um, things like that. So, um, you know, there's a lot of factors at play, but uh, if the treasury market and, and rates markets in general uh, have, are going to stabilize from here, it's certainly possible that, uh, that buyers could, you know, could kind of come back in. We're still facing um, a, a supply demand imbalance uh, for sure especially if, uh, if the calendar is only around eight or 9 billion. And Mike, I think that's the biggest point. The, um, the reasonable size calendar of eight or 9 billion, when you take out the taxable portion of that is uh, next week, we're expecting 6 billion uh, of tax exempt supply. You know, one of the things that will give the market some support in here is I think um, a lot of the uh, institutional participants have been building up cash, uh, cash positions 
Um, so as the market has adjusted here, I think you'll get some support because of the heavy cash positions. Um, so I think you, uh, I, I'd agree with your, your thoughts there that the muni market underperformance should stabilize. Those are great insights. Well, thank you guys for being with us uh, today. We'll uh, see how this coming week goes. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM-insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM-eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.